has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. What a powerful message. Our God is great, or great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. And I just want you to reflect at your own personal level. What is your level of reverence, uh, reverence for God? Because great is our Lord and mighty in power. So what is your level of reverence? And um, it could mean going to church. It could mean reading the Bible every day. It could mean prayerful all the time. It could mean evangelizing and discipleship. And his understanding has no limit. In other words, he knows everything around us. Uh, the Lord sustains the humble. I, I wish I could say this better. Uh, and uh, this class in leadership, now we're going into leadership. Um, the biggest weapon in leadership is humility. Humility. Um, because in First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 6, we are told to humble ourselves so that God may lift us in due time and that God resists the arrogant but gives grace to the humble. Humbleness. It is so disarming It is such a magnet when you are a humble person because it is written in the Bible. And as we get into leadership, those of us who are humble sustain relationships with your students, with your fellow colleagues, and with the society as a whole. I, I shudder myself when I see the level of arrogance in our political leadership in this country. And uh, you can see we're going through very difficult times. I just wonder, is God resisting us? So the Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. May we in this class remain humble so that God may uplift us in due time. Taslin Otieno, pray for us. Taslin, are you there? Uh, Maureen Gunjiri, are you there? I'm seeing. Huh? I'm in a noisy place. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. Florence Machio, are you there? I'm looking for somebody to pray for us. Yes. Can I pray? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Indeed, great are you, Lord, and mighty are you in power. And so, Lord, today, as we begin this class, we pray that um, you will help us in our journey as leaders to be humble. You'll help us, mighty Father, to lead as you lead. You'll help us, great and mighty God, uh, to order our steps and direct us in the way that we should go. We release ourselves to you, surrender ourselves to you, O oh God, to be guided, to be molded uh, for the glory and honor of your name and for the benefit of the society. We thank you for this session that we're going to have. We pray for our listening here. We pray for a heart that is fertile ground to hear instruction. 
We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into the business of leadership. And I want to emphasize this approach to leadership, our approach to leadership will be experiential. We are not going to engage in definitions of leadership and types of leadership uh, directly, but we are going to experience this by engaging with uh, a book I have written on the art of institutional leadership. And uh, I anchor my leadership on the potential of emotional intelligence. And so this will be our class text. And uh, I am hoping that uh, at the end of it all, we will have learned something that will make us good leaders, leaders of character, leaders of value for our beloved country, Kenya. So I want to do one presentation very quickly, and then we'll go to the text. And I will give you readings from the text, which we will engage you this week to next week. Uh, I'm very sorry, I'm doing only one hour because uh, I have a council meeting at six uh, this evening. Then I have a, a full council board meeting tomorrow. So it's quite busy. And then in the evening, I run to the airport to, to travel out. So um, I would like to share with you entry thoughts on leadership. En entry thoughts on leadership. Uh, and I hope the screen is up. And 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 I I. I am deliberate in uh, starting with a term. Notice I'm not even defining what is leadership. This, all these things will come up as we go through. But I'm starting with a term that uh, we are all familiar with. And that is um, transformational leadership. I'm putting it to you that uh, if there is no transformation when you are at the, the helm, then there's no leadership. If you don't transform fellow human beings, if I've now taught you research methods, policy and policy methods. We are now doing leadership and policy studies. If you don't change as a result of doing my research methods course, and we shall see that change when you are writing your thesis, then I have not offered leadership in the classroom. If your perspective around policy studies has not been deepened, again, then I will not have transformed you, therefore I will not have offered leadership. I was talking to somebody here who is, I was talking to the class teacher to my grandchild in one of the schools, and uh, I was telling her that the unit of analysis inside the classroom, in, in a school, is the classroom. So the class teacher is more important than even the principal of a school. A good class teacher is an asset. Why? 
because they have a chance to offer leadership and transform the lives of young people. So, what are we going to cover? I'm going to cover transformational leadership, perspective TL, transformational leadership. I'll give you a model of transformational leadership. We'll talk about transformational leadership factors. We'll look at a full range of leadership model. We'll look at the additive effects of transformational leadership and how does the transformation approach work. I, what I'm emphasizing here is this. We are not just doing leadership for the sake of it. We want you to become transformational agents because you did this course of leadership in Daystar University. So what is transformational leadership? What is transformational leadership? Description. Transformational leadership is a process that changes and transforms individuals and frequently incorporates charisma and visionary leadership. I normally tell people, what is this thing called charisma? Me, me, I look at it as something that hides in passion. So it is a process, changes and transforms individuals. And it frequently incorporates charismatic and visionary leadership. When you are engaged in transformational leadership, you influence, influence. Uh, you don't coerce, you influence. So transformational leadership involves an exceptional form of influence that moves followers to accomplish more than what is usually expected of them. I think the running word is influence. So why is Daystar catching up with other universities? Uh, it is through being definite about our processes for change and uh, visioning where we want to go. But we involve influencing. So I don't tell people you must of course, you must attend classes. But when I teach classes as a vice chancellor, as the leader, that is the greatest. This, that is the exceptional form of influence that then moves my fellow lecturers to accomplish more than what is usually expected of them. I want you to learn that influence is the biggest weapon in leadership. And you influence people by picking the broom. You must pick the broom. What are the core elements of transformational leadership? What are the core elements? Note that it's concerned with emotions, values, ethics, standards, and long-term goals. The core elements. So when you engage in transformational leadership, it is concerned with emotions, values, ethics, and standards, and long-term goals. Like now, we are very clear that after this master's program, our long-term goal is to make sure that the PhD program we are developing uh, is uh, accredited before you people graduate. So it includes assessing followers' motives. What are the motives of our students in this class? The motive is that they want to go on with their studies and do their PhDs. 
satisfy, satisfying their needs. They want to graduate on time. They want to graduate on time. That is a big need in everybody in this class and treating them as full human beings. So one of the things that you cannot do in DESTA as a lecturer is miss classes. Then you are not respecting your students. Even like now I'm committed, I've said I'll do one hour and give you assignments. And then Dr. Kegoda is going to come in. We are showing respect for your time. Transformational leadership has an encompassing approach. Encompassing. So it describes a wide range of leadership influence. One-to-one -one with followers. So at Deista, we are worried about every student. We give attention. And then whole organizations or entire cultures. So it is encompassing. But I like that last bullet around transformational leadership. Followers and the leader are inextricably bound together in the transformation process. So we are not just transforming you, by the way. I am also being transformed as we engage together, as we do devotion, as we do discussion in class, as you do your assignments. I spent about three days, long days, going through your work. So we are, you, the follower and the leader, are inextricably bound together in the transformation process. When you see a teacher in a classroom get exceptional results, like a mean of nine and above, the teacher and the students are inextricably bound together in the transformation process of getting results. Types of leadership as defined by James McGregor Barnes. Barnes, Barnes is a leadership guru. I'll also be talking about um, Drucker, Peter Drucker, and giving you his works for you to look at in leadership. This is what he says, transformational leadership. What does Barnes say? He emphasized the difference between sources of authority. And I like the one. He emphasized the difference between sources of authority. Uh, in transformational leadership, you want to be to run a flat structure. And it includes raising the level of morality in others. I am hoping that because you attended my course, some of you will never be the same and value the aspect of devotion and value the aspect of sacrifice and value the aspect of preparing work for your students. Morality, that is, includes raising the level of morality in others. There are two types of leadership, transactional. This is contractual management. You give, I take. Transactional. You must come to school on time. So you sign the attendance book. The principal checks, sees you are there. And then the contract has been maintained. Transactional. On a Saturday, we want to teach on a Saturday. So when you are a, t a principal in Menangai High School, you stand outside and you see bodies running to class on Saturday. And you smile as you go to your office. Everybody is here today. And then they go to class and they tell the student, where were you, where were we last week in that, uh, the chemistry of chlorine? Open your book and read and copy notes and now they go to social media on their phones. 
transaction. Did I come to class? Yes. Did I teach? Yes. Transformational is different. Occurs when one or more persons engage with others in such a way that leaders and followers raise one another to higher levels of motivation and morality. You see, it's very different. It is very, very different. Me and you, we are going to raise each other to a higher level of motivation and morality. I must go for my master's class. I must be there on time. I must finish my assignment. So you are motivated, but morally, you are now, you have lifted yourself to a certain standard. And then there is pseudo-transformational. This is personalized leadership where you pretend or want to exploit others. But you are not inextricably bound together. So look at these types of leadership by bands. Says transactional focuses on the exchanges that occur between leaders and their followers. There's this, uh, is it TPAD in TSC? Uh, very transactional. You know, even your, 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 some of you ask people to do that for you. Si wanataka kuona hii kitabu imejazo. Yes. Sudo focuses on leaders' own interests rather than the interests of the followers. So you are not driven by a high level of motivation and morality. So it is you are serving your interest. And then transformational, this is where I want all of us to be, a process of engaging with others to create a connection that increases motivation and morality in both the leader and the follower. And a line, it is a process which, which inextricably binds you together and increases motivation and morality in both the leader and the follower. I, I will pause there for a minute to invite any comments. Is there any? If there are not, then we continue. Hi, Prof. Yes. Uh, so for one to be an effective leader, do they have to have both the transactional, transformational, and pseudo-transformational? Or, or can you just have transactional and still uh, be the, a good transformative leader? I mean, I'm just thinking, do we have to have the three in one? I, I have a good question. Um, I don't want any of you to be pseudo-transformation. Please. Don't serve your own interests. You know the principals who are on this platform or the officers who are in this platform, principals who walk on parade on Monday, then they are not seen until Friday. They are busy planting their farms and uh, doing their matatus. But they are, on, they are there on Monday telling people how they must work hard and get results. Transactional, yes, uh, you want the record of workbooks done and corrected. You want uh, people to come and teach on Saturday. But that is not enough. You must increase the level of motivation and morality in both you, the leader, and your teachers and the students. So look at this transactional focuses on exchanges that occur between leaders and their followers. 
So no new taxes, you get votes. Sell more cars, you get a bonus. Turn in assignments, you get a grade. Surpass goals, you get a promotion. The exchange dimension is so common that you can absorb it in all walks of life. Transactional leadership. That's why I keep telling, uh, particularly the teachers who are here, never count duty by the shilling. Never. Never count duty by the shilling. So don't groan in the staff room because the parents have not paid performance improvement money. And when I ask you how much is it, how much are you going to earn? You're going to earn 3000 So how would you get motivation? Because that 3000 will disappear once you leave the gate to go and do shopping. You buy one or two, three items are gone. So what will, what will, keep, what will sustain you? So never count duty by the shilling. You do the duty, shillings will follow you. I wish I could say that better. I can look back. In my life. And uh, look at my colleagues. Who believed in the. Counting duty by the shilling. How do they expect me to go and work? They are not paying me for this. And also I, I look at people who just worked. Uh, the difference is. Unbelievable. Um, pseudo transformational leaders who are who are transforming, but in a negative way. They are self consumed. They are exploit. They are, they are exploitive. They are power oriented, with warped moral values. Kutumia watu. Kudanganya watu. Come up with very fancy phrases. And you know, you know very well that you are deceiving your congregation, your community, your school. And this is what gives birth to leaders like Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, and I don't want to name others. Now, transformational leadership, listen to this. The leader is attentive to the needs and motives of followers and tries to help followers reach their fullest potential. You are worried about that boy who is weak in English, who is weak in Kiswahili, who has no idea what chemistry is all about, So leader is attentive to the needs and motives of followers and tries to help followers reach their fullest potential. So Gandhi raised the hopes and demands of millions of his people. And in the process, he was transformed. He was changed. So just remember, when you are engaged in transformational leadership, you create a connection that increases motivation and Morality, MM, motivation and morality in both the leader and the follower. So the leader is attentive. Madiang, yes, uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you, Prof, and uh, pardon me for coming on here. Um, you mentioned the morality aspect of it, and as I listen to you, Mm. There are lots of elements of positivity mm. as the outcome of transformational leadership, as I'm seeing it. Yes. But uh, my question is, and you've mentioned the Saddams and um, mm. uh, Adolf and others you have uh, uh, wisely stopped. Does mm. transformational leadership end in positive outcomes per se? Are there principles of transformational leadership that fall within 
both positive and negative outcomes? Good question. Good question. I, I want to go here. You can be transformational, but in a negative way. Yeah. Yes. Don't worry. I'm, I'm coming. Yeah. So it's it's. It, it's in a negative way, self-consumed, exploit, exploitive, power-oriented. And I'm very deliberate with those words, with warped morals, moral values, warped moral values. So those are the negative aspects, Madiang. Now, if you go to this one, you can see you, the, this leader creates a connection that increases motivation and morality in both the leader and the follower. Um, I, I, I wish you would understand, why am I anchoring leadership on transformation? That's why when I came to Daystar, uh, Everybody used to say in Daystar, our values, our ethos are transformation, excellence, and uh, servanthood. Then I would ask them, do you know that this is a very high calling? Because if you are transformational, you must create a connection that increases motivation and morality. Morality, timeliness, availability. My students must graduate on time. That is a very high level of moral calling. Then I told them, what is excellence? When we say data, we value our ethos excellence. What, what does that mean? Excellence inspires fellow human beings and honors God. Yes. So a leader is attentive to the needs and motives of followers and tries to help followers reach their full potential. A manager attempts to change his or her company's corporate values to reflect a more humane standard of fairness and justice. In the process, both manager and followers may emerge with a stronger and higher set of moral values. And you'll be surprised. Results just come. I will want to pause there because of time. Of a, the the council of a, a council meeting. Uh, but I want us to go to the book. So we'll we'll continue from here. Please, somebody note, we have stopped at transmission transformation leadership and charisma. So I want I want us to look at the book. Um, and our class text is the art of institutional leadership. This is a must. This is a book I want you, you will highlight, you will an annotate in it. And uh, you will get nuggets of wisdom and leadership. In this book, the what we call the front matter, this book I've dedicated, I've dedicated this book to my late father. And uh, I'm saying you wore the apron of humility coupled with an infectious drive to succeed in life. You ingrained in me the virtues of hard work, trustworthiness, and empathy. I would want your first assignment is to decipher that dedication. Decipher. 
the forward to this book was written by Professor Olive Mugenda, uh, somebody I respect a lot uh, just by her contribution to our motherland, Kenya. I would want us to read the preface and acknowledgements on your own. It will help you develop the spirit behind this book. But our first assignment, and I hope you are writing, is to read the introduction to this book by Most Reverend Martin Kivuva Musonde, the Archbishop Catholic Diocese of Mombasa. He did the introduction to the book. I want us to read that introduction and uh, come out with a gist of what that introduction is saying. On page one, the secret sits. is a poem I have discussed with you, but I would also want you to carry it on in your heart. So our first assignment is chapter one, how to communicate, how to communicate. And uh, Caro, this first assignment, because they're already doing annotation and highlighting in the research class, this first assignment would be done in pairs, not more than two people. And what I want you to do with this first assignment is to develop a synopsis of 500 words. Please write down this. And Karo, uh, you also help me this assignment so that I'm, I'm clear what I ask the students to do. So you write the chapter one. You write a synopsis of 500 words, font 12. single space. That will be the market, the assignment for marking. How to communicate matters. How we communicate matters. And now there'll be a lot of discussion and presentation. So when we come, you'll have posted this work and this work like the work on annotation in research will be submitted on 31st. Will be submitted on 31st of January. At later 6 p.m. So this is a, a group assignment. How we communicate matters. And I want you to write a synopsis of just 500 words. But this is your book. And I'm hoping that all of you are trying to get this copy from Grace, from my office, research office. And uh, I want you to highlight and annotate in this book as much as you can. And we'll pick it up from there. When we meet, God willing, when I come, I will uh, continue with transformational leadership. We're going to have very interesting aspects of leadership covered. Now we're dealing with bands. We're going to deal with the Draka. We're going to deal with uh, all the gurus in leadership. 
picking part, parts and then anchoring them in this class text. The class text is compulsory for everybody. And uh, you're not paying money to, to a euro directly. This money goes to the publishers. So I don't want to look at the money myself. They'll give me my money when they have, uh, they're giving me the royalties. Thank you very much, everybody. Allow me to go for the council meeting. But uh, I can assure you there's a lot of interesting stuff coming. Juliet Totiano, yes, can I hear you? Thank you very much, Prof. And thank you for the powerful introductory class. I really enjoyed it. Maybe mm -hmm. just a clarity. Yeah. You mentioned something to do with the dedication part of the book for us to read. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know that, that is, <laughs> there's a word you've used there. I've not captured it well. Eh? Then... Mm -hmm. uh, there is also the, uh, you've also encouraged us to read the preface. No, and dedication, uh, Juliet, de dedication, okay. I want mm. you to decipher. Decipher, okay. D-E-C-I-P-H-E-R, -E decipher. Okay. What, 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 what is the import of this dedication? Yes, okay. So is yeah. it, is it an assignment or just uh, for no, my personal? No, no, no. No, it's, it's just for discussion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, together with blessed. the one. Mm. Sorry, together with the part of uh, the introduction and uh, same to the, that part of the priest that you've mentioned there. It's just yeah, for the, discussion. Discussion. But when when I come, I will call any of you and tell you to talk to us about uh, the Archbishop's introduction. What was the message? Okay. So. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Mm. All right, anybody else? Uh, very good. So 